invite Deanna to limp to the podium and <laughs> we'll get there. bring the invitation. Oh. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this evening. And I just want to bring honor to the council members, to the mayor, to the ladies upstairs, the Department of Public Works, and to our police officers, Father. They make the the city here just hum perfect, Father. And yes, there is bumps in the road, but man, everything is being accomplished. I thank you for that, Lord. May tonight be a good night that we all work together for the best of the community. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Yeah. 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 Anytime. No, Minnie's not. Um, her husband's having some issues. She called and he just says, I have to be here tonight. I apologize for her short notice, but she will not be here. It's 7 o'clock by the clock on the wall, so we'll use that one and call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shirley, would you take roll call, please? Mike Connell? Here. Chad Fuller? Here. Mindy Gallaby? Larry Lambert? Here. Bob Porter? Here. Steve Wallace? Here. Here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mayor Hammond? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I'd like to thank our new deputy clerk, Shirley, <laughs> for filling in tonight. Thank you, Shirley, for doing that. Mm -hmm. Looking now for approval of our agenda. I move that the Agenda be adopted as permit. Second. We have a motion from Steve, seconded by Chad. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes.
And now looking for reading and approval of the minutes of the April 6th meeting. I move that we suspend the rules, waive the reading, and approve the minutes from the April 6, 2023 regular meeting. Second. We have a motion from Mike, seconded by Larry. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. I don't believe we have any pre approved reports or presentations for tonight, so we'll move on to comments from the public. Is anyone here to make public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to communications. I believe Shirley has some for us. Yes, sure do. So um, our custodian, Deborah, she has given her notice and she will, um, that May 18th will be her last day. So we have um, posted the position, same thing, part-time position, and that's posted on our door, on our uh, website and on Facebook. So, um, the other thing is I did give you guys the flyer for the cleanup week. If everybody saw it. And we have communications from the mayor from the Perry Historical Society. And the last thing is um, communication from the attorney. Moving on to mayor reports. I do have a communication from the Perry Historical Society. Terry Shansky contacted me and asked me to extend an invitation to all of you, which I sent out by email, but just in case you didn't get that email, their um, historical society is having a outdoor event at the McQueen House May 7th from four to five in the afternoon. That will include a concert by the Perry High School Band and ice cream. And you're all welcome to attend. And Megan made these really nice flyers, so if anybody needs one, did you guys get one? Mm -hmm. Look, Chad, could you take one over to Dan and Jim? Oh, one in color. Oh, you get the special color one. All righty. But it just talks about Thank how you. the yeah. citywide cleanup will be handled this year. It will not be curbside like it has been in the past. And it's explained on the website, on the flyers that are available um, on Facebook. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to call. We're happy to explain if it's not clear how that will work. I think it will be um, real good. We're going to have the 30-yard um, dumpsters available for two weeks, so you'll be able to take stuff there. And the hours are on the flyer when they'll be available to be used. So can you remind me when the community garage sale is? It is May 19th, 20th, 21st. And there is a spot, well, we were talking about that, there is a spot on the uh, city website to go ahead and sign up for that if you want to participate, to the name, you know, address, etc. You just click on, click on that and it takes you right to a form that you can fill out right online and it'll register you and your address. And then we'll have a list of where all the yard sale locations are available for people to see. Thank you. The light installation for the new light at the corner of Main Street and 2nd Street is now scheduled for the first week of May. How about that? Wow. The consumers did come and mark the spot. Kevin went down and supervised and made sure yeah, that was good. And they told us they'll be here the first week of May to <coughs> install that. The other thing on my list is, oh, that, never mind, we crossed that off because we asked Devin, we can't do that yet. <laughs> so that is all that I have to report. Do we have any committee reports tonight? Just let everyone know that the Ordinance Committee will be meeting next Thursday, uh, April the 27th at 10 a.m. here in Council Chambers. Unfortunately, we get had to reschedule from our previously scheduled 413 meeting, so 
That's the reason we have another one coming up so quickly next Thursday, the 27th. And that's at 10 a.m., right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Any other committees to report? Um, just a reminder, we do have the parks meeting here at Council Chambers on Monday the 24th at 6 p.m. We can move now, I believe, any other committees to report? I'm sorry. We can move now to presentation and approval of the bills. I move that we approve the bills as presented and that payment be authorized. Second. We have a motion from Steve, seconded by Bob. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. We don't have any items under old business, so we'll move right on to new business and in regard to the mayor's appointment, this is to the building authority and this has traditionally been a position filled by our tr city treasurer and Megan has agreed to continue to serve in that position. So um, I am reappointing her to that and look for your approval of that appointment. I move that we approve the mayor's appointment of Megan Galbraith to the building authority for the term to expire May of 2026. Second. Second. We have a motion from Larry, seconded by Steve. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Moving on to our discussion of the possible approval of the mutual aid for the village of Bancroft. And um, Kevin is here tonight to address any questions or concerns you might have. And I'll let him just go ahead and explain about this. We talked before that uh, the village of Bancroft has requested help during their water tower project. Uh, the crew is on site and they've begun work on the exterior. Um, so they're, they're kind of uh, moving ahead. Um, and they would really appreciate our help with this project. Um, limited manpower and resources um, just kind of as needed um, doing um, a little bit of routine checks just to make sure everything's working the way that it's supposed to and we don't run into any major problems during the project that consume a lot of our manpower and time. A little bit of you know pain ahead and we get a little bit better results. So um, I think that Megan and I come up with a pretty good uh, cost summary to be able to assist them. If we approve it here tonight, then it, they're going to hold a special meeting to get it approved on their end so that we can begin um, helping them as needed right away. So that's all I have. Um, if anyone has any questions, I can take those now. I just a question, Kevin. I'm, obviously, the start time would be almost immediately. Any idea of the length of the project for them? Um, they have a scheduled um, contract, uh, which I believe is 45 days. Um, but if they run into issues like we did with ours, you're right, all very right. familiar with how this process works. Yeah. So a couple um, months, yeah, or tops. <laughs> I have talked to the village president a couple times. I did send him a copy of this um, mutual aid agreement that Justin prepared. And he called, yes, was it this morning? Yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday morning he called and just had a couple little clarifying questions. Talk, he talked with Kevin also and um, pretty much said that, that once we decide if, if we are going to agree to this mutual aid agreement, um, that they will then hold a special meeting. I know you don't know what you don't know right now or what may come up, but do you uh, foresee any conflict in your time or the time of any of your employees with the, if we embark on this uh, agreement? I don't, I don't see it as being um, overly extensive as far as manpower and, and time goes. Um, probably start out for the first week or so 
checking things out daily just to kind of get a feel for it. And then um, we'll probably switch to every other day kind of a thing. Um, and it's at our schedule, our leisure. When we're available, we can go. Um, hopefully it becomes routine and just works into the schedule nicely. If it becomes a burden or a problem, then, then we'll ask them to seek alternate uh, means to fulfill their need. It seems like a contract is pretty easy to get out of it. Yeah. Even right now, as you're working right. on something, if you're you can go. Exactly. I did like seeing that because I know we don't have if you know, a lot of manpower. Feasible. Yeah. So it's good we can get out of it if we need to. And it very clearly says that in case of an emergency here, that will preclude any aid to Bancroft. Correct. So Perry will take priority. So what, what equipment may you be renting to them? Um, for starters, it'll just be a pickup truck to and from. Once we get there, we will okay. utilize their equipment. Okay. Um, if there's a need for our back truck, we would take that over to do a repair or what, whatever, however you, that would become useful. But beyond that, um, I don't anticipate hauling a bunch of stuff back and forth. We don't have the time to be doing that. And, I mean, they're pretty. That's why I asked. They, they have a fully functional department there. Right. There's just no one there to do the work. So. Um, That's why I asked. I figured they have their own stuff. Why are we? Yeah, we just included that so we could charge for the truck. Just in case. To and from. Yeah. Any other discussion from council or questions for Kevin? I move that we approve the mutual aid agreement between the City of Perry and the Village of Bancroft and authorize mm -hmm. Mayor Sue Hammond and the authority <coughs> to sign the agreement. Second. Second. We have a motion from Larry seconded by Chad. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, have a good evening. Appreciate you being here. You want me to sign this one? Or will you have a special one? Okay. All right. Next on our agenda is discussion on health insurance. And we were waiting, last I knew, for Micah's update. He's, a, he's our person. Yeah. Have we gotten that no, yet? We have not gotten that yet, but this can go to the May 4th meeting. We can go one more meeting if you guys want to just do that. Well, I don't think we have anybody here who feels qualified to answer any questions about that employee's health insurance. So I think we will um, do no action taken and move it to the next meeting. And I see Tom, our county commissioner, come in. Did you want to speak to us? We can back up and have you do that if you'd like. Sure. I don't have a lot to say. I just came from the other meeting tonight. And, uh, uh, the uh, not, nothing of any great moment dealt with. Uh, recently, but I mainly wanted to uh, be here, and uh, if you ever have any issues that are concerned that pertain to the county, I would like to hear about it, and uh, I'm uh, available for you to, uh, to let me know. Um, I, I just would, there's one thing, I'm on the uh, public safety uh, Committee uh, and uh, the courts and the public safety committee, and uh, there is an issue, and I don't know that it's going to be uh, any any uh, immediacy to it. But it is, there is a case in the U uh, state supreme court that has to do with the, the question of whether judges who fund the court. Uh, with the uh, costs that they can assess against defendants. And uh, there has been a court ruling questioning the constitutionality of that. Well, on a statewide, the Michigan Association of Counties has been looking into it. I've had privy to some of their information. 
up to a quarter of the funding for uh, the courts. Um, of course, that falls in our uh, uh, area of jurisdiction. Uh, it does come from these costs, and uh, that could be a significant thing. Trying to predict when a court, especially the Supreme Court, is going to rule on anything like that is, uh, is very difficult uh, to do. So we don't know how immediate depends on how immediate the court uh, wants to deal with that. But, um, uh, so I just would let you know that that is something that's kind of uh, uh, lurking uh, in the background that could be an uh, uh, impact on the operation of our courts uh, here in the county. Um, and, um, but other than that, uh, just uh, want to let you know that uh, I'm available if you do have any concerns or issues you want to bring up. But I'll sit around and listen, try to see what's going on uh, here in the city. Okay. Anyone have any comments or questions for Tom? Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank we appreciate you. it. Moving back into our agenda then, our next item is a discussion referring the police department funding to a committee. Um, at one point in time this last fall, um, Steve Wallace, Mike Connell, myself, and Kyle Box, our police chief, did meet with representatives from the village of Morris to look at the possibility of beneficial merger and um, we did travel over to Swartz Creek and met with the police chief over there because they had done a merger. And um, so he gave us a lot of information, answered a lot of our questions. And then we, I don't know, we probably had four or five meetings and finally determined that a merger at that point in time was not gonna be beneficial to either municipality. So we basically said, let's revisit the, and maybe in a year, and just see if things are still the same or where we're at. But in the meanwhile, um, it's come to my attention through our um, Michigan Municipal League magazine that we are now a municipality of the size that we are, allowed to fund, or at least partially fund, our police department with a special assessment. Um, until recently, that was not um, a thing that we could have done. So I sent the information out to all of you, and I'm wondering if we could discuss the possibility of appointing the same people, if they're willing to do it, to a committee to look into that to see how realistic that might be for helping to fund our police department. So, open for discussion. I'm willing to do it. Okay, thank you. As am I. Okay, thank you. I already asked Kyle and he said yes. And I am. As I said last meeting, I'm, I'm concerned that all we're doing is adding another fee or tax to the citizens, but not getting any reduction. So we're going to, we already pay quite a bit of tax in the city, so, you know, where are we going to be at? It's just... This, um, is, this is, and I, and I know it's just being I know picky, it's just and I don't mean, I don't mean to be picky, but this is not a tax. So let, let's get in the habit of calling it... It's a a special assessment. It's a fee. It's a special assessment. It's not a tax yes. because it's treated differently, and I just don't want people okay. to. Okay, that's we're we're gonna split concerned. hairs with that one, but that's okay. Special assessment. Yeah. You call it whatever you want. I still, it's we need to make sure I do. I should say I need to see that we really need everything we have in the police department extra money do we need an extra police officer right now it's about it's a third of our total budget roughly and we're about three percent over budget right now according to the way it is right now roughly 
and I think there's an extra or a new fire uh, policeman officer in the budget. It's in the budget, yes. Okay, so that's roughly the three percent that we're over. Yeah. We're a small city. Can we can we really afford to have the size of police department? Anymore? Not just another way to fund it. Yeah. Which is to say, call it whatever you want. It's still a fee from somebody. You know, the citizens are still paying it. And, and my, my thought would be that this committee, when they bring their report back to you, would include that information in their report as best as we can say. My concern about only having the number that we have now is came very apparent to me when I first became mayor. Tom Royal had COVID and was in the hospital for six mm -hmm. years. So all of a sudden, we don't have four anymore. I understand that, yeah. but do we have? And I'm just asking questions. Yeah. I have yeah. no. I took a step. I talked to Steve the other day, and I took a step back from our discussion. Mm -hmm. um, do we? Do we have the volume? And, and I'm just throwing out words. Don't take the words exactly how I'm saying. Do we have the call volume to justify the police force that we have? Do we, you know, as there lots of calls, they, they go on, and I don't know, because we don't see a police report or a police run report. I don't know, I have no idea. They could be going every five minutes having a call. I have no idea. So do they have enough runs, or do they, are they overwhelmed in a sense, um, to justify that? And it's just a lot of money, and it's probably average, the three, per, a third of the net overall budget. I don't know. I think it's average. Yeah. Public safety, I think a third is below. All right, well, we have a one and a half million dollar budget, and we're spending five hundred thousand dollars in the police department, and we have a lot of you know, we have a lot of legacy costs. We have, there's lots of money, and everyone's paying more and more fees. We're going to start driving people away. That's all. I just want the committee to hear my opinion and, and, that and is really that, seriously look at yeah, it. That is certainly your opinion, and you have a very strong opinion, and your voice is very. <laughs> Well heard, <laughs> and I want to just respond to that. I don't think we're going to drive people away. People come here for many other reasons other than an adequate police force. Um, I no, I wasn't talking about police. I was talking about the fees that we pay. Well, so taxes, <laughs> assessments, all those things. Um, there is a general consensus when people are shocked, I should say, when they move here and they're told by the real estate agent one thing and then they get their new bill. So it's, we can't not look at that. That's all. It is a big shock when your purchase price on caps and your realtor hasn't been well, responsible enough to tell them that it will uncap <laughs> and so your new tax will be based on and I'm not talking for myself I do that that's value. not the first house I've purchased so I understand all those rules yeah. um, it's just I, I have to really think about it yeah and I think that's all good stuff so we would like to have our committee who's looking into this not only look into the funding but the need and to yes. gather information in, re in regard to... That's a good summary. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? Chad? Anything? Larry? No, I'm good. Okay. So we'll set up a meeting time for this committee and um, meet as long as we need to, be it six months, two months, three months, a year, whatever we take. And uh, we'll bring reports back as we have information to report back on. So thank you, Mike and Steve and Kyle, for uh, serving on that committee. We'll move into another discussion regarding special assessment. And this is in regard to the ambulance. I'm sorry. Oh, the, the council has to approve our committee. Well, the committee was already formed, but it certainly won't hurt to have council approve our committee. So that, let's do that. I move that we refer police department funding to the committee <coughs> recommendation. Second. So we have a motion from Mike, seconded by Larry. 
and you had a blank in here. Was this to have a date? Oh, okay. Um, Police Department Funding Committee. Okay. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. Motion passes. And once again, thank you. So now moving into the next discussion, which is in regard to the um, CISA letter that came out to the city. Um, I believe all of you got a copy of that letter by um, my email forwarding that on. Um, and CISA has um, done a lot of research on what they need to do to keep the um, emergency services viable not only for the city of Perry but for all the municipalities they serve and how many is that Bob is that ten, ten? they serve ten, ten municipalities could be, there, there may be twelve total but I know okay. there's ten for sure and so their request for special assessment increase is to take it from the $65 that it is now to the $110 that they're requesting. And the way that the special assessment works in the city of Perry, and it works a little different in almost every municipality, the townships, the village, the um, city of Duran does theirs differently. So, but the way that it works for the city of Perry is as a special assessment, um, if we are only going to increase it 10%, the council has authority to do that with a vote and it is just done. Um, the, typically, the, the bill for the special assessment goes on the summer tax bill. So if we were to vote tonight, after discussion, that we were going to increase the assessment by 10%, then that would start on the summer tax bill, and it would allow us to increase what we're paying to CESA, although obviously 10% of $65 is nowhere near 110 per household. But it would allow us to at least increase a little bit because we have to have uh, public hearing to go higher than 10%. We have to create a new special assessment district and we have to determine what the property values are within that district in order to achieve $110 per household assessment and so forth. So it's a process that takes about three months. And we could, if we decide to go this route, then move ahead to further discussion to create the special assessment district, have public hearing to determine if we do move ahead to agree to the $110 per household. And if we do agree to do that, then we can put the difference on our winter tax bill. Then we would be relieving the pain somewhat by not having all of our special assessments on the summer tax bill. So if we put that balance of the special assessment to achieve $110 per household on the winter bill for this year, we would also need to decide, are we going to leave it like that? Would we continue to bill it on the winter tax bill? or would we move it back into the summer tax bill? Or would we do part of it in one tax bill and part of it in the other tax bill? So I mean, those are our options. Those are the things we need to decide if indeed we do move into the creation of a new um, special assessment district to achieve the balance of this $110. So now aqua talking and you can go ahead. <laughs> discussion. Open for discussion. 
Bob, are all the other participants right now in CESA at the $65? Everybody right. pays $65. Even Duran, even though they do a, they do a household assessment or a millage. a millage, thank you, it's almost 65 dollars it's, it's right in there. It may be a couple pennies more or less. Depends on the value of your house. Um, but everybody right now is 65 <coughs> Can I just interject? Mm -hmm. Some of them do it do accomplish it differently, but they're all at 65. Um, I think Perry Township, and Tom, you could help me with this maybe, I think Perry Township bills a portion of that to the residents, and then the township pays a portion of it. They were picking, yes, exactly right. They were, when it went up from 45 to 65, um, they kept to the residents at 45 and the general fund picked up the other 20, yeah. that's my understanding. Yeah. Um, but there, everyone has been uh, presented with the CESA thing. I think there's one they were trying to get to this week or next week, the two. They, yeah. um, I think they got to all of them now. I talked to Tim on the phone yesterday. Okay, so they, they are working on it. Um, some of them are more pressing than others, uh, but we want everyone to be on the same page. And there's some questions that came up about the park. You know, they have uh, the seasonal park things. Um, we made a decision as a board to vote, uh, charge those spaces fully. Because in the past, they've gotten discounts. Um, so I know that was a question that came up from new firms. Mm -hmm. But um, the 110, that is, that's our bare minimum to provide the services that we have everyone right now it, it, it is, it's going to have to go up in small increments every year a, a certain percentage we don't know exactly what that is but it's less than a 10 percent we're hoping and thinking um but it's you know to have that service that's what we need to be at i did talk to tim our other representative to the cesa board um and he's been assisting with those presentations and he said to me, everybody is on board with this now. It's been very well received. Yeah. Very That's minimal sure. questioning, um, just clarifications and their questions. It wasn't uh, um, really any real pushback. And I think everybody understands the situation that we're in with the um, uh, inflation and everything going up and, and just what we have. So we have older equipment we're trying to replace. And, just, and that's just the ambulance. Yeah, that's just the ambulance. But we did get a new, new used ambulance that's in service, I believe. Isn't it right? It's not in service yet. Um, so it's a used one that's newer than some of our other ones, and it has low mileage. We have a pretty decent deal on it. So okay. we're trying to do some things. We have it. It's just not. We have it, right? And I did. I voted against it because I didn't know where our money situation was. So everyone knows that's where I stood with it. So that was the only reason. I didn't know where the money's coming from. The last meeting that I went to, CISA meeting, a couple months ago, there was um, some concern about uh, two municipalities. Their representatives expressed concern that that would not, this 110 would not pass in their municipality. I mean, they flat out said that won't fly. So I asked him that on the phone yesterday, and he said they're on board with that. They understand. After the presentation, they understand what's needed and why it's needed to keep the services where they are right now. So if we do move ahead into establishing a new special assessment district to achieve the balance of this money, they would come back and do that presentation again. We would have public hearing and so forth. We'd go through the whole process. So we'd need to probably start it, though, in September to have it done in time, if indeed it moves ahead, to have it on the winter tax bill. We hope, as a board, we hope to have all that information, all knowing everyone's at mm -hmm. um, by June or July. That's right now the kind of the consensus, so, and hope. Yeah, if we do elect to raise it to 10% here that we're talking about, recommend 650, but nonetheless, Bob, your earlier point, it is another increase, and on the heels of that, we're going to come along and talk about a much bigger increase uh, to, to get to 110 here, and 
next few months. Yep. Are we? How do we communicate to the people to say that this is 10 percent now? There's a little piece of where we actually need to get, or are we going to be back in three or four months, five months, six months, and say now we really need to step up? Or we're better off to just wait and do the 110 and educate the people one time and just raise the question. That's one way to do it. The 10 percent, the six dollars and fifty cents, is going to go to will help a small amount possess it. Um, not much, but it is showing people that we're trying to go along with this. Um, and to your point, yes, we have to educate people, and, and if they can come to the SUS supports, they're open. If anybody wants to come, um, I'm sure if they want to reach out to me, I'll make sure they get a copy of this stuff so they know where we're at. Yeah, I think when we do the it's public hearing for the one to get to 110, we've got an education plan. I'm just Correct. questioning whether or not we do. Granted, it's just 650. But some people can say now they're going to come along and try to get a bunch more. I understand 650 times whatever number of people is right. some additional funds for SESA right now. I don't know what other municipalities are doing with their right, their right raising of the 10 percent or not, or they're voting on that. Um, I have no issue with doing it either way. Honestly, it's not the 650 times. And this, however many households we have here, isn't going to be a whole lot. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And this is a all or nothing, correct? That's what the yeah. attitude is, yes. All the municipalities. All the municipalities. Or the or exactly. Yes. If, if we have a municipality who is adamant of not raising it to 110, then we will look at it and see what we can do. Because if we don't have all of them on board with that 110, let's say one drops off, we can't fund it at 110. That changes all the numbers. Well, it depends on the size of the one who drops off. No, it's, it changes all the numbers. Okay. The 110 is, that was, and uh, you may have been at that meeting yeah. when I argued pretty loudly, which I do have a loud voice, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, that is the, I, in my opinion, it really should be more. This is bare minimum. This is, if, it, if anything happens that is not projected, it could be very harmful with the money on even at one ten. So it's tight for for that. The one ten is going to be tight for two to two two and a half years. Then we can start <coughs> funding again and buying, saving like we did and financing uh, minimal amounts towards new stuff and we have a, a bank account to pay for some of it. Um, so it's it's unfortunate, just like the city is. You know, the same thing. Yeah. You just don't have enough money. My thought with doing the 10% now, Larry, was because if it doesn't, the new special assessment district doesn't get created and we don't agree to go to the 110 or other municipalities don't agree to go to the 110, then it's all got to be rejuggled around and who knows how long that'll take we might be back around to next spring before we're addressing anything. So at least we've achieved right. the yeah. increase that's allowed. I think it's putting your best foot forward too. Yeah. Like, you know, I think it's putting your best foot forward too, so showing that you're on board with it. By, oh, I'm not. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just saying I think it, it looks good. I'm on board with doing it. My concern is that we, in some fashion, communicate in advance of the summer tax. <coughs> <clears throat> what the the broader plan may be that you're going to hear more about additional needs that are there because we won't have had the public hearings and all that by the time the summer taxes go up. I agree. I agree. I agree. Exactly. Awareness that this is directionally where SESA needs to be, but there's a lot more to come. Right. I see your point. People are like, well, I just I just paid the raise. Yep. Now they want more. Exactly. Yep. You can t say it until you're blue in the face, and they're not going to hear it. They're going to hit 65 or 72, whatever right. it comes up to be. Right. They're not going to hear the 110. Right. They, everybody hears the lower number. And I think period. communication <clears throat> and being very transparent with the process is so important. It's, that's my only point. I did in the monthly letter that I put out, probably, 
I'm the only person who knows what it says. Well, Megan knows because she's the one who posts it, but not everybody looks at it is what I'm trying to say. But my April 1st letter was concerning this, was concerning the ambulance assessment, and it explains what that is because many people, especially new homeowners, have no clue what that is or why it's there. And I did include a quote from the letter that came from CISA asking for the 110 in, and just touched on the surface that one small increase and then another increase may be forthcoming and just said at the end more information will be forthcoming. So I think we would probably need to do a mailing not something in a place where nobody ever sees it anyway, but an actual mailing. Not that they read them when they come in the mail, but make every effort that we can to get it to them to explain what we're doing and what we're looking at possibly doing and why we're doing it, uh, even including a copy of Cecil's letter, and, you know, to do as much as we can to educate and inform. That's my only point. Yeah. yeah. At least there's one more person that does read your Oh, do your you? So. Oh, I know. Linda reads it because she checks my spelling and stuff. <laughs> and that's good. I'm glad she's on board with that. <laughs> Other discussion about that? I move that we support the CESA recommendation to increase annual and special assessment district to 10% for summer taxes 2023. Second. <clears throat> Now, I'm not sure if this has to have a roll call. Did you happen to ask Deb that I didn't question? Know. Let's just do it. It's sure. probably better to do one than not. So, Deputy Clerk Smith, would you please take a roll call vote? <laughs> Mindy Galloway? Mike Connell? Yes. Mary Lambert? Yes. Bob Porter? Yes. Steve Wallace? Yes. Chad Fuller? Yes. Motion passes. So we should um, create communication starting to get that out uh, with a letter that talks about this next process if indeed I'm hearing you say that you do want to move ahead with the, looking at the creation of a new special assessment district. Okay. If all the other municipalities are on board. Correct. And that would definitely be um, required and I think they're all saying the same thing but yes definitely yes that that comment yeah. did come up at the last session yeah. we need to know where everyone stands because everyone is kind of waiting and no one wants to take the first step so. so we will put on the agenda for our next meeting, further discussion regarding creation of a new special assessment district. And communication to the public regarding that. Okay, now I, any further discussion on, on that topic at all? We'll move into our next agenda item, which we actually can't move into. If you would each take one of these and just read that. This came from our city attorney today. He had called me, he had emailed me regarding this subject and this subject is um, the one that we have to go into closed session to discuss, so we will not be discussing it here today. If you'll just read the letter and understand that in regard to possible adoption of zoning ordinance amendment 379 and number 380, we cannot act on either of those tonight. We um, are allowed to um, 
due to no action taken on those tonight. And as we hear more from the attorney, we'll know more about the taking action in the future. So that moves us into discussion concerning potential master plan update assistance. Larry, do you want to sure. take that? Yeah. I think uh, here a while back, I had some conversation here with regard to the fact that the Planning Commission was looking at uh, potentially enlisting a contract uh, service to help with the update of the city's master plan. Uh, to that end, we have gone out with Megan's assistance. Uh, to uh, request RFQs or RFPs. Uh, we went up to four different companies. Three did respond back this past week with, uh, with quotes. Uh, the Planning Commission held a special uh, meeting to review that information uh, on Monday. Uh, we do have a front runner that uh, we are going to be meeting with at our regularly scheduled uh, meeting on the 1st of May. Uh, and would encourage uh, all of the council members that can attend to uh, to come in and, and listen to that uh, that discussion at the seven o'clock and maybe one here in the, in council chambers. Uh, we do have quite a range of uh, estimates from a low of uh, about twenty five thousand dollars in assistance to a high of about fifty seven or fifty eight thousand dollars, and a little bit of spread in between with the three that have, have come back. Uh, like I say, we will be meeting with the one just to make certain that we understand the uh, uh, details, ask questions, etc. And uh, if all goes well, hopefully we can uh, come forward probably and have it on our next agenda for uh, to actually taking some action and potentially a decision. Uh, Megan has been in contact with the RRC representatives and they are in support of the person or the company that we're looking at. Uh, and obviously we need to have them on board because we are, just as a reminder, going to be looking for some uh, RRC grant funding to help support the efforts of uh, uh, our rewrite. Comments, questions? We're getting close. How many How many people did you get back? Or three. Three out of four. Oh, well, that's good. Okay. Any other discussion regarding that master plan update? Thank you, Larry. Any other business that may come before council this evening? Any people that would like to make public comment at this time? I wonder if the chair would indulge me an additional maybe 20 seconds on something I should have mentioned. Just a reminder that this Saturday in Durian, is the uh, Shiawassee County Health Department is uh, running that uh, household hazardous waste collection and it is a significant matter to get some of these household uh, hazardous waste turned in. It's a, it's a good way to deal if you've been storing stuff around the house and you're afraid to dump it in the environment, which is hopefully true. Uh, that uh, is going to be this Saturday, uh, Durand City Hall, 8 until noon. Is that a flyer that you could let me have or uh, let it us certainly copy? certainly is. Sure. And then Megan could post that on our website and um, wherever she thinks it should go. Presumably, if you've gotten something previous, the health department. Yeah, they haven't given us anything this year. They haven't given anything. They should have. What's that? The link's on the Shiawassee Health Facebook post. Oh, is it? It's also yeah. DEA uh, medication collection thing, so for every need for conjunction with that. I don't know. Usually it is. I've been hearing it on the radio all day today about Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any council discussion or observations? Any agenda items other than those we've already mentioned that we should give to our deputy clerk? At 
752. This meeting is now adjourned.